Today is all about a little 16-bit console that makes me always have to say, SEGA! Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know you remember those commercials, but today we're going to cover our top 10 most expensive games on the Sega Genesis, and this is one of our most fruitful collections. Yes, because our Genesis collection is CIB. A lot of the cartridge stuff that we collect for other consoles, like Super Nintendo, yeah. is just loose, and we make custom cases. But for Genesis, we do it CIB, so they're worth a lot more money, and they're expensive, but Genesis, amazing library. Yeah, and nothing on this list is under 100 bucks. Yeah, this list is so. banging, dude. This total, just of the 10 games we're talking about today, 1,600 bucks, which is absolutely wild. We have over 50 games in our Genesis collection, and this is just 10 of them, and yeah. it's 1,600 bucks. Let's jump in with number 10. Number 10 is a little game called The Adventures of Batman and Robin, and there yes. is a game of the same name on the Super Nintendo, but they are completely, completely different games. Different. I don't know why they did that. The Genesis one, I probably like a little bit more. It's a little bit more of a Contra-like. It's kind of a run and gun with beat em up elements. Yes. And it's co-op, which is a plus. The other game is just more of a traditional side-scrolling beat em up They're both awesome. They're both fun, yeah. They're both kind of spendy. This game comes in CIB at $102.48. Yeah, which is kind of pricey, but this game is really fun, especially if you like Batman, and especially if you like the old Batman cartoons. It yeah. kind of feels like you're playing the cartoons a little bit, because yep. the art style is very similar yep. and stuff like that. The music's great. I love the, the graphics, the 16-bit awesomeness, and Batman and Robin. So this game's awesome. I mean, the 90s. Batman was just alive and well. You had the Burton films, and then you had the animated series. And it was a good time to be alive. Incredible. It is. I will say, when you play two-player, good luck deciding who plays as Robin. Yeah. Because <laughs> everyone wants to be Batman. <laughs> All right, the next game on our list is $125. And that's a little game called Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, which was an arcade game, but then they ported it to <clears throat> consoles. And this game is so much fun. It's very weird yeah. and very unique, <laughs> but you're, you play as Michael Jackson yeah. and you go around, it's a beat em up kind of, and you go around saving little kids, which Michael, little, Michael, yeah, it's a little problematic. But then, like when he does his specials, like his special moves, he dances, which makes the bad guy the the, the bad guys just can't resist the, those beats, the, and they yeah. just start dancing too, dude. dude it's, it, it's you get the freaking sixteen bit versions of his songs. I'm pretty sure in the game, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's actually a good <clears throat> game. And what's so cool is I don't know if it's on the Genesis version, but the arcade you get up to four player, and then you it's just four different Michael Jacksons. Yeah, There's yeah. no other character. Yeah, so the arcade version gets the nod because it's up to four player. Yeah. Genesis version can only handle two players. But, but, but it's the same Michael Jackson, different outfits, same songs. This game, although it's a lot of fun, and it's just so bizarre that you're going to have fun with it. I will say the game gets very redundant yes. beyond the halfway point. Yes. It's kind of just like, we I'm ready it. for it to be over. I think it's a level or two too long would be my take. But Michael Jackson, Pornwalk, Moonwalk. I mean... The 90s were weird, and they were like, oh, what's popular? Michael Jackson. Okay, let's have him fight crime. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it's fun. It's a fun game. Yeah. Number eight on the list. One of my favorite games in this series. Probably is my favorite game in the series. Contra Hardcore coming in at $126.25, which yes, that seems expensive. I don't care how you play it, but I'm telling you this game's so damn good that that is a steal because that's less than the price of two modern games, and I think it's worth yeah, it. Yeah, I, I would pay $126 for this because it's my favorite Contra game, and I think it's my favorite Genesis game of all time. Yeah. This game is phenomenal. Freaking Contra Run and Gun. The music gets me hyped. We have it on freaking vinyl. We have yeah. Like a, yeah, it's so badass. The level designs are amazing. The weapons and... On top of all of that, we did a co-op NDR, so pretty freaking bad. That's one of the feathers in our cap. Yeah, for all those people that say they don't play games. Yes, we do. Oh, we fucking got it, bro. Oh, yes. I was, yes. We hung too long on that last one. Oh, no, dude, I was so nervous. Holy shit. You ended with six lives. Another thing about this game that is so cool is the the different characters yep and the branching paths yes so this game can be beaten on all these different paths which is really neat because the, it's a gift that keeps on giving you're gonna find your favorite path and there is a best path yes. and if you watch our co-op in ndr i think that is the best path but nonetheless but you can choose your adventure kind of yeah once you get that good at that path it's like well challenge yourself 
go be the different one. Yeah, play different levels mm-hmm. that aren't a part of it. Like, that's what's really fun. The story's great. You got the coupe de tat is in it. Yeah, <laughs> the, 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 the Gabagool. The Gabagool. The, the, the freaking Mass Crusader. We're, we're idiots. See, there's so many amazing bad guys in the yeah. game. There's a Transformer that's really cool. Yeah. Um, Optimus Prime, yeah. I'm sure is what his name is in the game. But this game is phenomenal. And if we didn't have it, I'd, I'd buy it right now for 100 Hot take, but I don't think it's that hot of a take. And I think we both agree on what I'm about to say. This game is better than Alien Wars. And Alien Wars is a freaking killer game, but hardcore, I think it's just that well, much it's better. It's because the reason I don't like Alien Wars is because of the top-down levels. Mm-hmm. The top-down levels are fine, and but but when you play hardcore, it's amazing front to back. There's yeah. no like weird levels, which I get. They, Alien Wars is kind of an ode to what they did on the NES. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. got those perspective levels, but hardcore, man. In Incredible. I don't even know if we can finish the episode because I want to go play. Yeah, I want to play. It. We'll see if we come back for game number seven. I like shooting him a little early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, dude. You ready for the uh, the turn of events? Yeah. And I guess we're back with number seven. Uh, that was we we played and beat we played and beat it <laughs> real quick. Uh, Gargoyles. If you like the cartoon. Now you can play as it. It's kind of cool. It's a fun platformer. The graphics style is really cool. And this game is going for $135. Getting kind of pricey. This cartoon was amazing back in the day. Those of you that grew up in the 90s, that that Fox cartoon pocket, that wave of cartoons they had was so amazing. I love this cartoon. And I, and I like the game. It's a good game. I don't put it in the great category. But here's the good thing. You know, Robert said it comes in at 135. This game got a modern remaster released and uh, physically through limited run, but you can just download it if you want to play it. I think it is worth a play, especially if you've got some nostalgia for the Gargoyles cartoon. Very similar art style. They did a good job, not a great job. And, you know, a lot of these licensed games back in this era, it was kind of hit or miss as if they would be good or whatever. I do think this is worth playing, for sure. I think it's definitely worth a playthrough. I don't know if it's worth 135 bucks, but if you find a way to play it through emulation, or if you download it on the eShop or somewhere, yeah, you can just just play this game if you're intrigued. And then if you really do like it, maybe then think about 135 bucks. But if you're gonna spend 135 bucks, maybe get hardcore. (laughs) Yeah. But let's move on to the next game. Number six on our list is kind of, I don't know if it's fair to put it on this list, but we did it anyways. It's a modern release on the Genesis. I mean, it's a, it, it comes in a Genesis case and it's a Genesis cartridge. Yes. So it's a Genesis game. It's a <laughs> Kai Magazine software released a game called Metal Dragon. So there's a lot to like about this game. And this game is going for 137.50. I do think that that is very low for where this game is going to end up. Yeah, because, because I don't it's a rare release. Yes, yeah. they did a great job with the release. Great inserts. The cartridge is is really really nice. This game is think about Mercs. It's a run and gun, top down run and gun. You're running up the screen, but it's got Metal Gear vibes. Is from, Cut, from a scene. Yes, yeah, the, the story is very Metal Gear-esque, kind of spoofing on Metal Gear in a way. So all of that sounds like, well, holy shit, I need to grab Metal Dragon. Here's where this game kind of yeah. needed, I think it needed more time in development. It's, it's, only, a, it's a cool concept. It is, but it's only one player. This game would have been awesome to be co-op. Now, I know if you're going with the Metal Gear theme, you'd be like, well, how would you do that? I don't know how that comes off. But my main gripe with this game is there's no strafing. Yep. So it's a vertically pushing game and you've got your multi-directional shots, but the guys come at such a frequency that it would be nice to be able to lock your shot and strafe back and forth to help clear the screen because the aiming, it does give you all the angles you want, but it's it's just frustrating. It it kind of feels like it's in the middle of an NES or a 8-bit and 16-bit game where it's not fully 16-bit. And I'm like, it's a new release, so why couldn't you do that? Yeah, I, I just just give a button to lock your shot. It, yeah. it, it would have changed it for me. It literally would have taken this to a top of the heap must play game. But I, I just that that part of it, yeah. it's cool. I'm glad I've had it. I'm I, or I'm glad I have it. <laughs> I, I'm glad I've played through it. It's yeah. It's just it's just okay. But I do think the price is going to get stupid. I, I, yeah, I wouldn't recommend going out and buying it. But if you're intrigued by it, maybe find a way to play it because it is a really cool idea and a cool concept. But for freaking 137 bucks, I don't know if it's that's worth it to tr- try it. It's not the best of a game. Yeah, I do appreciate though that there are companies out yes. there still putting. So I don't want to shit on it too on much. On cartridges. Yeah, I don't want to like. I I love that people are still doing that. I think most people 
would play this and say it was so close but so far away. Yeah. But anyway, that's our number six most expensive game on the Sega Genesis. Number five, we're talking turtles, baby. TMNT Hyperstone Heist. Whoo! This game is amazing. This game is so good. $141.38 though. Getting really expensive, but and we got ours a couple years ago, but I think it I think we did spend over hundred bucks on it. Yeah, it was it, I thought it was like eighty. Eighty maybe, maybe so maybe at still, a convention. But still but it was up there. Still kind yeah. of up there, but now it's coming in price. This game is such a fun turtles game. If you like the original turtles games, the beat 'em ups, turtles and time and all that stuff, it's just right there in the pocket. The levels are great, the music's great. This this is a one of the best turtles games. It's yeah. so good. Yeah, I think a lot of people miss this game back in the day. You know, you had turtles in time, but this game is in that same vibe but very different. And I didn't play this game back in the day. So comparing it to Turtles in Time, like if you ask me right this second, which of the two I'd rather play, I'd rather play Hyperstone Heist because yes, it's newer it's, it's to me. It's new, yeah. But Turtles in Time is, ah, man, they're so close that it's like, you, you need to play this game. And now that they have like the Cowabunga collection, yes. all that stuff out, there are cheap ways to play this game. You don't have to go out and drop a buck 40 on the cartridge. Which is insane, but I'm glad that we do have it because it's so fun and the Turtles, man, it's so wild. And also like, this is a side thing doesn't have to include with Hyperstone Heist, but in like, I think in Europe, it's their Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. Like hmm. they're, like they're TMHT. That's yeah. just, that's just weird to me. Yeah. I just wanted to say that, but Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Hyperstone Heist, it's a banger of a game. Number four makes me want to say, I want to be a gun star hero. Yeah. <laughs> stars in his eyes. Gun star heroes. He does have stars in his eyes. 158.73. Oh. Now, this game is awesome. I love this game. Yes, Run and gun. Co-op. Yes. Amazing. Amazing game. One of the better co-op Genesis games that one could play. I do, however, get my feathers a little ruffled when people think this game is better than Contra Hardcore. It's not even close! Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, Gunstar Heroes is fantastic and like, it's a great Genesis game. If you like run and gun co-op yeah. games, it is phenomenal. It doesn't even compete with Hardcore. Hardcore yeah. is phenomenal. I, I agree. And I, and I think that's kind of a hot take. People get all, because I think there's a lot of nostalgia around yeah, this game. there is. And I didn't play this game back in the day, so my, but here's the thing, I didn't play Contra Hardcore Yeah, I didn't play in either. either one. Yeah. These are adult takes. <laughs> I played Contra and Super C and Alien Wars back in the day, but not Hardcore. Anyway, Gunstar Heroes is great. I hate to steal its thunder. It's it's a must-play Genesis game. But when you're talking tit for tat, yeah. And this game know. is more expensive, almost 160 bucks for a CIB copy. It's fun. It deserves to be played. I don't know if I'd spend 160 bucks on it, which is so odd because I would be willing to spend a little less than that on Contra Hardcore. Yeah. That's because that game is better to me. Yeah. But if you love Gunstar Heroes, that's awesome. That's great for you. Yeah. It's I mean, it's an expensive game that. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's great. I think it's a must-own Genesis title. Yep. I would say a must-play Genesis title. There's lots of different ways to play these games. If you're a physical collector like us, I definitely think you should have it in your collection. If you're just about playing games, find a way to play it. Yep. You do you, we'll do us, but it's the number four game in our collection. Number three is also a three, and it Ooh. was the last in the series for a long time but not anymore. And that's Streets of Rage 3, a staple. You talk Genesis, you're thinking Streets of Rage immediately. It's an iconic beat-em-up series. Streets of Rage 3 is incredible. Co-op, beat-em-up, the levels, it's it's arguably one of the best beat-em-ups. Mm -hmm. It's so good, and it was the last one in the series for the longest time until they made 4 recently. Yeah. And 4 is incredible as well. I mean, yeah. They did a great job of 4, but 3 is $159.20. Oh, it's, it's so good. Yeah, when you look at like people that grew up Genesis kids and that, I think Streets of Rage 3 is a game that a lot maybe didn't play. I think 1 and 2, yeah, those were. most people played, a lot of people played 2. 3 though, man, that game is, it's really good. Yeah, they, they It's like, hard to pick for me. It, it's, it's like 2 and 3 are just right there. I they, love them both. They really took what was great about 1 and 2 and then just made it just a sharp better for 3, mm -hmm. I feel like. Like it still plays pretty similar to 1 and 2. It's just a perfect game. It's so good, dude. The number two game on our list. I don't know why these games 
are, are seemingly expensive on every console. Maybe it's because everybody wants to own them because I think everybody did own them back in the day. Yeah. And I don't think there was like a short supply. But number two is Castlevania Bloodlines Ooh. coming in at an even 200 bucks. 200 bucks for, CIB. A, for a CIB copy of Castlevania Bloodlines. This game is really good. It's not my favorite Castlevania game, but it is still really cool. Mm -hmm. The the graphic style is really cool. The music's really cool. I mean, all Castlevania games, the music's incredible. But for 200 bucks, I don't know if I'd spend that for this, but I do think this game, again, needs to be played. It's it's definitely a good entry in the Castlevania series. For sure, for sure. I I, I put this game up there fairly high on my list. Like it's top five? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. for sure. And I like the fact that you could pick two different characters, yeah, which have two cool. completely different play styles. Up to this point, when you get into a Castlevania game, you're just who you are, yep. man. You're, you're playing as that guy. Yeah, and, and this game changes that up. It's got such stiff competition in this era because Castlevania 4, although it's easier, Castlevania 4 is a lot it, easier it than is a lot this game, easier. I think. But Bloodlines is, is really good. Yeah, and I feel like Bloodlines also is a Castlevania game that not a lot of people talk about. You know, people talk about 4 a ton, people talk about Symphony of the Night a ton. Yeah. But Bloodlines, I feel like, kind of gets lost in the shuffle, but it, it's still an awesome game. Yeah. So. And, you know, uh, this is another game. I, I always want to point this out because I don't want people to see the price and think, oh, I'm never going to be able to play that. Obviously, there's emulation. But then there's a Castlevania collection out there as yes. well that this game is in, which you can get on your modern consoles at a relatively fair price. And then that also includes other Castlevania yeah. as well so it's kind of an awesome bang for your buck to jump into a bunch yeah. of Castlevania games and you know all those collections depending on how you play them on what you play them on and all this different shit I always feel like there's a little bit of input lag and yes. there's always some magoo going on <laughs> with them but if, if price is a thing then th there's ways to play them yes but anyway playing an OG on original hardware Wow. It is it is a beautiful freaking copy I'm glad we have it it's freaking crispy CIB and now the number one most expensive game in our Genesis collection. This game is a crown jewel and what makes it even more expensive is we have it complete. That means we have it in the box with the manual and with the tattoo. Yeah, and so that's the Punisher. The price we're gonna say is just for a CIB copy, which a lot of people consider it complete in box if you just have the box manual in the game. The Punisher. Yep. The Punisher on the Sega Genesis. We have the tattoo. Coming in at 352 bucks and 74 cents. I think with the tattoo it's more. Yeah. But I, I don't know how to find that price. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just the sold comps. Now what's gonna happen to the price of this game? I don't know because there is a collection coming out oh, on is the there? Switch that has the Punisher in it, which I think is the arcade port of the game. I could be wrong on that. Damn, that sounds fun. But that may stifle some people from playing this game but this game is co-op it's a lot of fun it's a really good arcade port it's not one-to-one -one. we've beat it in the arcade and the genesis version but the genesis version still really Damn. damn good it we got this when we bought a giant video game collection so we got it for way under market which was really nice and it's awesome that the tattoos in there because it's in pristine condition and it's just dude the punisher i think is one of my favorite beat-em-ups obviously you know turtles on time and the streets mm -hmm. of rage and all stuff are incredible but the punisher is badass it's a beat-em-up with guns yeah, like, that's, yeah. Just, that's just cool that's yeah. just awesome and dude the punisher is just it's a phenomenal game it played in the arcade play it on the genesis play it any way you can play it yeah. because it deserves to be played it deserves to be talked about yeah. this game is so fun i wish it was a little bit closer to the arcade version but it's still amazing on the yeah, genesis yeah they did, they did a damn good job yeah. with what they were capable of doing For i the feel time, like the yes. yeah i feel like it's a, a an amazing port to to get as close as they could to yeah. the arcade and i i just love the punisher comic books yes dude he's just an awesome character i, I even like the punisher movie with dolph lundgren Okay. <laughs> okay, I, I just can't go that like far. the Punisher. Oh, I, I love the Dolph Lundgren movie. I mean, yeah. I'm a John Bernthal guy. The okay, new, yeah, no, I, I'm okay with that movie too. And then, you know, the Punisher on Xbox, PS2. I, oh, I just, that, that, the modern Punisher game is badass. All things Punisher, I will always recommend. I'm a little bit of a fan girl. What are you going <laughs> to do? But that's our most expensive game in our Genesis collection. 352 bucks for yeah. a Sega Genesis. Yeah, game. that's insane. So expensive, but I'm so glad we have it. So that was 10 games. That are over sixteen hundred bucks combined. CIB, wild. But it, dude, a lot of these are freaking bangers. Yeah. You should, if you have a Genesis, 
most of these will probably be in your collection. Like these are Genesis staples. Yeah, and we're giving CIB prices. I will say it's substantially cheaper to collect for the Genesis if you go cartridge card, only. Yeah, card only. And if 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 you're all about physical, maybe that's a route to go. And because, just make your own cases. That's, yeah. that's what we do for NES, Super Nintendo, mm -hmm. uh, N64. Like, yeah. That's what we do with mostly everything. Yeah. Besides Genesis. Genesis. For some reason. Just, well, I think it's just. By happenstance, we got going on it. And we're like, well, everything we have is CIB. Might as well keep it going. Might keep as well spend it rolling. Might as well spend more money. Yeah, on it. <laughs> hey, let's just go. But yeah, nonetheless, um, well, it's, that's a pretty cool collection, man. It is. Uh, our Genesis collection is. It started off very small when we started the channel, yeah. but now it's growing, and I'm slowly becoming the. I love it. Yeah. I didn't grow up playing it at all, so it's it's fun. Uh, let's talk about this beer real quick before we go. This is the Cold Slice by Big Grove. This is a hazy double IPA. Get ready for it, guys. With anchovy hops, Ugh. and like the the can art looks like a pizzeria, and I think it's like supposed to be a joke of like an anchovy pizza. The description is a delectable slice of a hazy double IPA. Best enjoyed, ice cold, right out, of the, right out of the box in the fridge. New anchovy hops that pack flavor of juicy fruit gum, watermelon, candy, hints of pine, and no fishy taste. This beer does not contain actual fish. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was kind of hoping one would flop out in the glass. Um, <clears throat> you can see, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, mine's almost gone. Um, it, was, it took a little bit for the mental side of things. Yeah, to, the marketing of this is terrible. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Because I think they just gave the hops that name. I don't think there's any anchovies harmed in the making of this beer or this video. But there, there isn't any anchovies going on here. It scared the shit out of me, but it's a really good I idea. I picked it because I was like, oh, this would be interesting and unique and what the hell. Yeah. Uh, but Big Girl makes amazing beer. I've been to their brewery a ton. All the beer that I have from them are so good. But this was in a sampler pack and I was like, I've never had this. Comes in seven point five percent, so it's kind of yep. a it's kind of a ripper. It's kind of, but dude, it's a great freaking double IPA. It's smooth, it's crisp, it's it's light and easy drinking. Mm -hmm. It's going down easy. Like yeah. my first sip, I was so nervous. Yeah, I was like, Ugh, is I was going to be anchovy. I was ready to vomit on camera. Yeah, I literally thought there was going to be a fish yeah. swimming around. But if there was, that'd be a cool gimmick. Yeah, people would be buying it for fish. I have vomited on camera before. <laughs> yeah, Red Man. Yeah, have anybody seen that? <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless i do like this beer yeah this this beer is shockingly good maybe because my expectations were low yeah maybe that's the trick yeah you gotta lower the expectations to make people like lower it. the bar and then it's a lot easier to jump over it yeah see yep i know how the olympics work yeah so yeah, there you go <laughs> nonetheless guys we always appreciate you tuning in subscribing to the channel in the comment section below let us know do you collect for the Genesis? Ooh. What is your most expensive Genesis game in your collection? We would love to hear. Tell us some stories about the games. Yes. All that stuff. We love chopping it up. And we will catch you guys on the very next episode of the one and only Gaming Off The Grid.